Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, Disney's Perfect Town. Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Hims. You can check out their hair kit at 4hims.com forward slash brain food for just $5. And more on Hims a bit later. The town of Celebration was first loosely imagined by Walt Disney himself, though the current town differs wildly from Disney's original idea. Whereas Disney pictured a perfect futuristic city where technology blended seamlessly with real life and all possible needs were taken care of, an idea that served as the basis for the Epcot theme park in Disneyland, Michael Eisner, the CEO of Disney at the time, instead visualized Celebration as a quintessentially classic American town, a nostalgic holdover from a purportedly better time in history. While Celebration didn't exactly conform to Walt's original plans for a futuristic city housed beneath a cool dome, it was conceived with his idea of creating a perfect utopian society firmly in mind. Built just a few miles away from the Magic Kingdom on land that was originally used to dump alligators, Celebration was designed from the ground up to be a perfect society, and the company spared absolutely no expense, spending some $2.5 billion making sure that everything fell in line with their vision. Disney hired some of the world's foremost architectural minds to design each building in the town, inviting renowned architects like Robert Venturi and Cesar Pelli to design buildings even as humble as banks and post offices. In addition to this, Disney also hired urban planning experts and graphic designers to oversee where these buildings went and how they were decorated. For instance, the graphic design firm was tasked with creating signage that could be displayed around the town that didn't convey any sense of branding. Disney was so impressed with this work that they went on to hire the same company to design such trivial things for the town as manhole covers and the arrows that you see on signs which tell you which way to walk around the town's park. On that note, perhaps the most jarring thing about Celebration was that for many years there was no branding of any kind anywhere in the town. Celebration had no billboards, no franchises, and no advertising. Ironically, this is something Disney, one of the biggest mega brands on earth, used to sell the idea of the town to potential residents when it first opened in the mid-1990s. When it opened in the mid-1990s, demand for property in this development was high. So much so, in fact, that Disney had to hold a drawing which required a deposit of $1,000 just to see who could speak to their salespeople first when the homes started being auctioned in 1995. Over the next few years, prices slowly dropped in celebration, and today they're roughly in line with the average house price in the region. As for how many people live there, according to the most recent available census from 2010, the town is currently home to 7,247 residents. However, Celebration's official website lists this figure as being closer to 9,000. In terms of demographics, the town is made up of about 90% white residents, compared to about 58% in surrounding areas, with almost no single people living in the town, which may have something to do with the Declaration of Covenants. So now you might be wondering, well, what exactly is this Declaration of Covenants? Well, this is an amazingly detailed 166-page document which prospective residents of Celebration have to sign, agreeing that they adhere to a number of rules when they move in. These rules include things like how you can park your car in your driveway, how big your bushes are allowed to be, what kind of compost you're allowed to use, how much bark must be around certain plants at all times, a rule preventing more than two people from sleeping in the same bedroom, and a rule stipulating that a pet can be removed from the community without the homeowner's permission. These are just a few of an amazing number of other restrictions that would make even the strictest of HOAs elsewhere blush. Of course, as Eisner said when Disney opens the town, the first principle of celebration is that no one is actually required to live here. As you might imagine from all of this, many residents and visitors have said that the town feels very Truman Show-esque, and that it is so well designed that it comes off as looking rather artificial. Speaking of artificial, the lengths Disney went to when designing Celebration to make it look like the perfect town is nothing short of astonishing. 
plastic trees housing speakers that blasted Muzak from the 1940s and 50s could be found across the town. In winter, fake snow, nicknamed Snope, was dropped regularly. Dead leaves were imported each autumn to make the town look more picturesque. There were even rumors in the 1990s that Disney hired actors to walk around the town just to make it look more inviting to prospective buyers. Disney also attempted to get people to regularly hold get-togethers on their porches with such events as lights and lemonade nights, but these sorts of efforts were mostly failures. As one resident noted, society's not like that. People wanted to sit indoors and watch TV instead. In 2003, Disney auctioned off much of the developed parts of the town to a private buyer, partially eliminating its stranglehold. By 2004, the majority of the town was no longer owned by the Disney Corporation. This was much to the chagrin of many living in the town who feared this rose-colored time capsule of a town would turn into a suburb like any other without Disney at the helm. This is something that hasn't happened yet, partially thanks to the Declaration of Covenants that is still in place, and also there's the fact that the residents themselves fight any change tooth and nail. And now for some bonus facts. While we humans often like to look at the past with amazingly thick rose-colored glasses, whether it's our own lives or recent human history, by most metrics, the world for humans has actually never been better. For instance, while an era like 1950s America is often propped up to be a simple time where life was just about as perfect as it can be, think Leave it to Beaver, it was also a time when a woman's place was in the kitchen, a black person's place was in the back of the bus, imminent threat of global nuclear war was just a part of day-to-day -day life, getting your brains literally scrambled was the pinnacle of medical science, including earning the originator of the procedure and Antonio Egas Moniz, a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, infant death rates were 750% higher, while the average lifespan, partially because of this child mortality rate, along with the state of medical science among other things, was around 45. Also, the CIA was busy conducting experiments on the effects of biological and chemical agents on American citizens without their knowledge. Then there's also the various forms of eugenics that were going on, including forced sterilization of undesirables. And yes, if you're wondering, this did happen in the United States as well. Then there's the Chinese famine, which was just kicking off and killing 20 to 43 million people. Finally, there were all of the deaths due to wars that were going on, although they were drastically reduced from the previous decade. Now, certainly every era does have its problems, but you'd be hard-pressed to make the case that this quintessentially perfect time for America was even in the same league as today in terms of quality of life for most citizens of this particular rock floating around in space. Nevertheless, we humans almost universally love to think of the past as better than the present, even if all evidence is to the contrary for a variety of fascinating reasons which we'll probably discuss in an upcoming video. And speaking of things that were better in the past, I'm sure many men out there have hairlines that have seen better days. I mean, it's not just me, right? But while it might be too late for me to get my hair back, although that would be pretty fun, here's actually a picture of me with some pretty wild hair and less beard from back in the day. But the good news is it is possible to help stop hair loss from happening in the future. It's good news for everyone who's not already bald. And that is where HIMS come in. HIMS offers medical grade solutions to the problems modern men face. And not just on the top of their heads, but also with other parts of the male body that don't work so great as we get older. Indeed, men who are aged between 18 and 40 are less likely than any other group to go to the doctor. And being in that demographic personally, I can totally understand that. But that doesn't mean we should miss out on healthcare. At 4 it's easy to get recommendations from real doctors on generic equivalents of name brand treatments at affordable prices. And these are both prescription and non-prescription medicines. It's really, really easy to do. All these products ship discreetly and they look great. They are... Uh they even sent me some. Got some uh, vitamin supplements here for hair and shampoo for hair. And there's a bunch of other stuff in the box which I don't have in my hands right now. I mean, like I said, for me, it's too late. But if I had this 10 years ago, I would be all over it. Look, as I said, healthcare for guys can be a bit intimidating. We just don't like going to the doctor for whatever reason. But do yourself a favor and check out 4hims.com forward slash brain food. And with the hair kit, you can try it now for just $5. But they have other stuff too. So again, that's 4 hymns.com forward slash brain food and thanks to hymns for the sponsorship and thank you for watching